Hey, what's going on everyone? I want to show you the second type of loop in Python. In this video, we're going to cover the while loop. Now, the while loop is one that you'll use probably a little bit less than iteration in the for loop, which we covered in the previous video, but it's something that you absolutely do have to know. So, the while loop is, I'm going to use the metaphor of a small game that you're writing. When someone starts your game, when someone starts the little program that is your game, you want to welcome them to the game. And then presumably you want to run some kind of game loop that will just repeat and run game loopy things, whatever your game or program does, until that user wants to exit. So you don't have a fixed list or dictionary or tuple or some other data structure that like is finite where you go through each thing and then you're done. And then you exit and your program exits and your everything is wonderful. This is sort of open-ended and you're, you're waiting for some external event, whether it's a user typing in quit or whether it's uh, some like port scan finishing or a web crawl finishing. If you're waiting for some external case to happen that you can never predict as you're writing the program, then a while loop might be something that you want to look at. So the way it works is you have this while keyword and then you've got something true. Now it doesn't need to be in, in parens. While something is true, this goes back to the truthiness video that I made, um, I think it's uh, three or four videos back in this playlist. It's like uh, conditional execution, that kind of stuff. So it's something that evaluates to true. While that's true, we're going to have a loop block, a loop body, um, or an indented block. So while something is true, you indent and there's your loop body again, right? This indented block of code. So while that thing is true, this will just execute over and over and over. And when this gets to the end, that while clause, this, this conditional uh, clause is evaluated again. And if it still evaluates to true, well then the loop body begins again from the beginning. And this will happen as many times as it takes until that truthy value that we're evaluating at the beginning of each loop to change to false. So when that changes to false, the next time that it asks, is that thing still true? It's going to say, uh, nope, it evaluates to false. And right about here, Python decides, okay, well then we don't go through this loop again. So it just jumps to the first unindented block after this while. I want to show you how this works in practice, nice and easy. Uh, in fact, I actually just noticed a little bug. What we really want is, we, we don't want this to happen every, every time the loop runs. This will be our entry to the game. So the first thing you'll see is, welcome to my game. Deserves an exclamation point, don't you think? We save that, and now we're going to run it. So what do we see? Welcome to my game. And then it checks to see if this something true evaluates to true. Now. There are other values that evaluate to true. Uh, for more, please see the video I mentioned earlier. So this definitely evaluated to true. And then the loop block began to execute. And at the end of this block, that check is uh, set to false. The next time it's checked, it evaluates to false. Python says, OK, well, no need to go through this loop again because it's now false. It doesn't evaluate to true. Execution jumps to the statement after this loop body is over. This indented block of code is done. And then that prints out. So, so we're done. Something true is now false. So I'm going to make this a little bit more realistic. I just wanted to show you the most sort of pure way that this can exist. And instead of um, just using the Boolean value true, um, we're going to make this an input. The way that input works is, I'll show you this in the REPL, we're going to have a question. And instead of something true, we're going to call this choice, because this is a choice that the user is making. And in the REPL, I'm going to show you what that looks like. So input, what that does is, as soon as that function is run, the program blocks and waits for input from standard in. So I'm going to say blah. I don't really like how this looks, so I'm going to make some quick edits to what this looks like. And then the input function returns whatever value 
the user typed in. This function used to be called raw underscore input. As of Python 3, it's now just called input, which is uh, much nicer. Okay, so you notice that it, the way input works is it's a Python function, a built-in Python function in the Python core that prints out whatever prompt you give it. So that's the parameter it takes here. What would you like to do? It prints that and then blocks, waits for input, takes my input, and then returns it. That's sort of what's happening under the covers. What I want to do is make it look a little nicer. So what I'm going to do is, since it's just going to print whatever I give it here, I'm going to ask it to print a new line after my question, a little caret. It's actually not a caret. It's a <laughs> greater than sign, and then a space. And what that's going to do is make this choice look a little bit nicer. So uh, I shouldn't have exited. So now you see what this looks like. What would you like to do? And then a new line. And now I have something nicer. And now if I look at choice and I inspect the value that that variable is pointing to, I can see that it's exactly what I typed in. OK, one more edit we're going to make here. We don't just care that choice is defined. We care that it's not quit. So when the user types in quit, as soon as this choice becomes quit, OK, so now I've edited this to basically be more like you would make this in a game. We're still going to print, hey, and welcome. We're going to take a choice using this input function from the user. And then what we're saying is, as long as it's not quit, we're going to run through this body and play our little game and whatever. But as soon as it, the user types in quit when they're asked to make that choice, uh, we are going to not run this block again. And I have created a bug. This actually belongs into inside of the loop. Uh, so we can just give this a truthy value. Any like string will be, any non-empty string will be truthy. So that this evaluates to true the first time, or not quit, we're going to give it a starting value of start. Could be anything really. Um, in fact, I'm going to make it just an empty string. And then on each loop iteration, we get the player's choice, we print it out, and we start again. So let's go through this loop a few times. So welcome to my game, that should only print once, and then we enter the loop body and we get the first choice. And we'll say play. So we're going through the loop again, it tells us our choice was play, and we start at the beginning of the loop again. Foo, bar, it's going to keep asking us this until our choice is quit. So now choice has been set to this value. As soon as it prints out your choice was blah, the loop ends. And instead of going through the loop again, this is now false because choice does equal quit. Execution jumps to the statement after the loop body ends and this next statement is printed out. So we're done, choice is now, and then it shows you the choice that it has in memory. So that is the humble while loop. Um, feel free to experiment with that a little bit. It's a useful one, but together with this and iteration, you're pretty much set for uh, what you might want to be doing. Likewise, the range function that I showed you in the iteration video and the input function that I show you in this video uh, are two things you'll use quite a bit. They're super useful for experimenting and writing whatever programs you're going to write. So that's it for the while loop. If you enjoyed this, make sure to like, subscribe, uh, tweet at me, Facebook me, day and night, Instagram my face off, show me the searing pain of a large Patreon donation. I'm getting a fucking recording studio in our next apartment. I don't give a shit. See you in the next one, guys. Peace.